Hello everyone. Salvation is a gift that has been received by many down through each generation. Salvation is something that's released people from their guilt of sin. It has rescued them from the consequence and the punishment if they were to die in their sins. And it is also something that has redeemed them that they might serve the Savior. And we're going to hear from a couple of girls who have experienced salvation. They have received this gift of salvation and they're talking about what this actually is and how they have been saved. And we encourage you just for a few moments to listen to what they have to say. And perhaps today you will also receive this gift that is offered to you in the word of God, the gift of salvation. My name is Jemima Brown and I had the privilege of being brought up in a Christian home um, where both my parents were saved and both my grandparents um, on both sides were saved. Um, so I had a lot of godly influence um, from a very young age. We attended Calvary Free Presbyterian Church in Microfelt um, where we were brought faithfully to church and Sunday school every Sunday. Um, so I knew from a young age that I needed to be saved. But I'd never really done anything about it. Um, it didn't really hit me personally. However, I did have a desire to get saved. So when I was about six or seven, um, I started praying every night, please save me, um, because I thought you had to you know, keep praying the same prayer um, to eventually get saved. Um, but that was wrong of me. It was nearly like just trusting in words um, to save me. Um, but my mum asked me one night um, out of interest um, what I prayed for each night. And I just told her um, I prayed um, that God would save me. Um, every single night and then she sat down with me and explained the gospel simply and clearly turning to these verses here Romans chapter 10 verse 9 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved and then in verse 13 um, of the same chapter for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved she also um, showed me Acts 16 verse 31 um, and they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. So I knelt by my bed, and with simple childlike faith, I asked God um, to forgive me my sins and to make me ready for heaven. And I was so happy after praying that prayer, um, just the peace of being saved. Um, I just wanted to tell everyone. So the next day in school, um, I told my friends and I told the children at my table, because um, I was just so happy and just the joy um, of salvation. Um, was in my heart and I just had to tell them. Um, however, in secondary school, I had started backsliding so gradually that I didn't even notice at the time because I had got books for Christmas um, when I was about 15 and they were by a Christian author and had Christian principles. Um, and I loved these books um, and I became addicted to them, reading them all day, thinking about them all day, reading really late at night, being tired the next day, um, just tired all the time. Um, I just couldn't put them down. And unknown to me at the time, I was making an idol out of them. Um, but one Sunday night when Reverend McKee was preaching, um, it was a very solemn message. And in his closing prayer, I remember him praying, Lord, I know there is one person here tonight who needs to get back to the Lord. Um, and I didn't know that that person was me at the time. So I prayed in my heart that that person would get back to the Lord that night. So as I was in bed that night after coming home, I felt that I wasn't content. So I prayed and asked God to forgive me for backsliding and for putting these books before God. I turned to Psalm 51 and read the chapter and I want to share verses 10 to 12 with you now. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Last year, as I was making decisions for university choices, to my shame, I didn't think about what God wanted. I only thought about what I wanted. So I started McGee University in September, and that was when I realised that God didn't want me there. So I quit after the first two weeks. But God even cares um, for both the big and little things in life, um, because just a couple or three weeks after I quit university, a vacancy for a temporary classroom assistant had come up in Cookstown High. So I took it up and I'm just waiting for God's will to be shown to me about where I should go next. I just want to leave an encouraging verse with you if you are looking for God's will for your life. 
in Isaiah 45, verse 2 to 3. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. Now, as many of you know, um, Wesley Graham, who was the missionary to Nepal, was my granda. During his illness in the last few months, it was encouraging to see how peaceful and joyful he was during his trial, which was a wonderful example to me of how you should face trials. One of the things I've learned from this experience is that God gives us sufficient grace to go through each trial. I'd like to finish by asking you if you have put your trust in God, who will never leave us and forsake us. Thank you for listening. I would just like to begin by reading Hebrews chapter 12 and the verse 1, and it says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Well, my name is Holly Abernethy, and I was born in a little place called Dumfries in Scotland on the 6th of September 2004. I was born into a Christian family, which has proved to be the biggest blessing to me as I grow up day by day. I was sent along from as early as I can remember to the Sunday School and Children's Meeting of Stranraer Presbyterian Church, where my dad ministered for seven years. Even though I was one of the very few at those meetings, I still enjoyed hearing God's word preached. And a little verse that was proclaimed very often is John chapter 3 and the verse 16. And it says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This wee verse led to my conversion, and at my bedside, at the age of four, my dad led me to the Lord. This has been the biggest blessing to me, and God has been so, so good to myself and my family. I can remember many happy memories from our time in Stranraer, but in the year 2009, my dad received and later accepted a call to Antrim Free Presbyterian Church. This didn't really faze me, as I was only four years old, so soon we moved over to Antrim and I began a wee primary school there. I enjoyed attending the Good News Club and the Sunday School of Antrim Free Presbyterian Church, and again we had many little friends there. We were now just a 10 minute drive from my nanny and grandas and we were so much closer to my other family members which I just loved. In the year 2010 I found out the best news. My mum was going to have another wee baby. It never even crossed my mind that it could be a wee boy. I just always imagined having a baby sister. So in the year 2010 Rebecca was born and she has been my best friend since. Soon after Rebecca was born she fell very ill. And I remember my dad always telling me that the churches all over the country were praying for her. The wee verse says in Romans chapter 12 and the verse 12 to continue instant in prayer. And God answered the prayers of his people at that time. And Rebecca soon recovered from her meningitis and never has looked back since. Now in my eyes, everything was perfect. I had a lovely church that I attended, a brilliant school and my new wee baby sister. But the Lord had other plans. And in the year 2014, my dad received a call to Bethany Free Presbyterian Church. Back then, I just thought this was the worst news possible, as I just loved our little house in Antrim and all my family and friends around me. Every day I would come home from school and peep into dad's study and he would be praying. Mum and dad never stopped praying to God until they received their answer. They have always been such good examples for me. And prayer is now a complete necessity day by day as I live my life for God. So at the age of 10, I moved to Portadown with my family. And of course, I had to be in the middle of the whole moving process as I didn't like to miss too much. Soon after, I started Portadown Independent Christian School and it has just been amazing. I've met so many friends for life and even the teachers have been so, so good in helping me day by day, not only in my normal schoolwork, but in my walk with God. I enjoy our Bible studies every single day and our prayer times. Due to the kindness of God's people, I settled into Portadown in only a matter of weeks. I now help out at Sports Fun Week, Holiday Bible Club and the different outdoor Bible meetings that Johnny Smith holds in June time. These have been of such great help to me as I seek to live my life for God and try to serve him in little ways as I grow up. 
I enjoy attending Youth Fellowship, The Reach and Rising Generations and through Rising Generations I learned a little verse that I would like to share with you. This verse is found in 1 Peter chapter 2 and the verse 9 and it says But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. I'm thankful to God for saving me and using me in little ways for him. I'm so grateful to God for my mum and dad and I always say dad has a few biblical questions thrown at him every single morning as he tries to eat his breakfast in peace and quiet. I'm thankful to God for a Bible believing church, a Christian school that I attend, for all of my friends and my family and everything in between. I cannot wait to see what the Lord has in hold for me in the future. Thank you. When Peter preached to the Jews who had crucified the Lord Jesus on the day of Pentecost, in Acts chapter 2, we read that the Jews turned to Peter and said, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter first and foremost told them to repent, acknowledge their sin, realize that they were heading in the wrong direction, and turn to the true and living God. Trust in Jesus Christ for salvation. He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the Holy Ghost. They would receive the gift of salvation if they come to the Lord Jesus, repented, and turned to the Lord, acknowledging their sin and recognizing their need of a Savior. I trust that today you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost if you confess your sin and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ.